Hi, this time I wanted to talk about a very challenging type of setting in tabletop role-playing games, and that is the apocalyptic setting. I think apocalyptic campaign settings are great, they are very exciting, they go beyond the standard campaign setting when it comes to presenting the obstacles, the hazards, the enemies, the situation overall. You feel like everything is against the player characters and still they manage to succeed as long as you play things smart, with bravery, using all of your character's abilities, playing with the character's background. Combining that with the apocalyptic game world, it's an experience unlike any other. But there are some important challenges when it comes to running these apocalyptic settings. I want to start with a little story. This was back early college days, my early college days. There was this game master running a Werewolf the Apocalypse role-playing game, uh, Chronicle. And as he started to talk to me about what his group was doing, we actually never played with each other, we never played uh, as a game master or as a player, but we sometimes shared stories about our own experiences with tabletop RPGs. But I started to think that his campaign was in danger as he started to share some things with me about the way that the world was proceeding. It kind of felt to me like he wanted to give many triumphs, many victories to the player characters. Maybe it's just my perception of that storyteller, because you know, in, in the old World of Darkness um, games, the game master is referred to as the storyteller. So I always thought that that guy was a bit too desperate to keep players in his group. It felt to me like he was always giving them things, like allowing them to do all sorts of things, even though it was against the logic, the challenges of the game. It's kind of like those people that start to give out experience points and magical items and artifacts, but not because it makes sense with the story that is being created through the interactions with the game world, but it's pretty much a way of bribing the group to stay in that game. The, the players are being bribed so that they won't leave the campaign or chronicle or whatever. So it always felt to me that that storyteller was just giving them too many triumphs and victories, in my opinion. And the expected result came to happen. They actually solved the apocalypse in Werewolf. The apocalypse, in some way, the group managed to obtain a balance between the worm, the weaver. I think that's the name in English, because I played Werewolf the Apocalypse in Spanish, eh, Hombre Lobo el Apocalipsis, and you call it La Tejedora in Spanish, but I think it's the Weaver in English. And Gaia, there was this balance finally. So the world basically became some sort of paradise. And that was the death of the Chronicle. The storyteller didn't know how to proceed with that. So the group fell apart. There were no problems, no challenges, no great evil to defeat, no greater problems. So that's, I would, I would say, the major challenge in apocalyptic settings. The first challenge, perhaps, that if you manage to stop the apocalypse, what now? Because it makes sense with real, real life. In real life, we will never achieve true peace. We must strive, yes, obtain, strive towards obtaining harmony. But that, that will never be possible. It's something that you want to achieve all the time because it's a constant struggle. We see this even in the birth of a child. Just take a look at all of the things, all of the bad things that could happen to a sperm while it is making its journey. It's always a struggle, a fight, a challenge. And an apocalyptic setting is this and so much more. It is the greatest of challenges within the game world. So if the player characters solve any apocalypse, any calamity, catastrophe, 
that's it. We will talk about a few ways to handle that in, in a, to rescue the setting in a different way in a few moments. But yes, you are pretty much taking away the essence of many role-playing games and settings in that way. In the old school games, old world of darkness, you have pretty much every game in that line is based around some sort of apocalyptic event. Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Hunter the Reckoning. In more recent times, we have Demon Gate. This, this couple of settings for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, very good settings. Uh, the new edition of Midnight, the Nightfell setting. Although there are some, some differences, I think the Nightfell setting is a bit more optimistic when compared to Midnight. In Midnight, most of the world is evil. It's not exactly apocalyptic because evil is ruling supreme, but because evil is taking over everything, that eventually will lead to the destruction, self-destruction of the planet itself, of the world. But when it comes to Nightfell, the sun has been murdered, but there is still a lot of pockets of resistance. And most people, even some monstrous beings, are actually trying to fight the darkness because they have identified that there is a complete lack of balance, a complete lack of harmony. Even vampires in that setting feel like everything is going to end up destroyed if things continue like that. So yes, in, in that regard, you can see that there are still some variations when it comes to the level of bleakness or hopefulness when it comes to apocalyptic settings. But yes, it's a very dangerous thing to take away the thing that makes the setting post-apocalyptic. Uh, we'll talk about a, a different type of, of post-apocalypse post in a few moments. Imagine that in Nightfell, suddenly the sun was resurrected. The sun basically was murdered in the past. So now the characters find some way to resurrect it. And now it's no longer a world of darkness, a, a, of complete darkness. Now there is light and everyone is happy now. And that's, that kills the setting. It's going to turn into a different type of fantasy instead of dark fantasy or apocalyptic fantasy. The same could be say a set of night, midnight. If you kill Isrador and you destroy or purify those that were tainted by him, that's the end of midnight. And so forth, it applies to any setting. So you could be thinking, well, that's very difficult. How, could you, how can you run those apocalyptic settings? I think my, my personal advice is that you should obtain minor victories in your campaigns. Even at the conclusion of a campaign, it must feel as if you have completed a single piece of the puzzle in order to solve the problem that is causing this apocalypse. And that's the error of many people, in my opinion, when it comes to running apocalyptic settings. They want to solve everything at once in a single chronicle, in a single campaign. And they kill the setting, that's it. There is no longer this huge colossal threat that is causing the apocalypse, no cataclysm no insane calamity so now it turns it into a completely different experience so i would recommend that each campaign or chronicle should be handled as small triumphs perhaps an, an entire campaign focused on defeating one of the major villains but not the major villain it's also a good idea to explore the different perspectives of the of many different characters throughout the game world. You could handle different smaller victories like that. In campaign number one, you have this group over here in this region, and they are fighting this villain over here. And that's the entire the all of the plotline follows that particular thread. And in this other region or zone, you have this other group that is trying to stop this sort of miasma or calamity from advancing. And that's the entire thing about that campaign. They want to stop this threat, this, sorry, this threat in that particular story threat. So I would recommend smaller victories with campaigns featuring different parts of the game world. But what if eventually after playing many campaigns, or maybe like maybe it's a uh, one-time thing. You only purchase the setting to run 
a colossal campaign and at the end of that campaign you solve all of the problems in that apocalypse or maybe you want to end things on a sour note where the apocalypse destroys everything it all depends on what you are looking for but I think a lot of people will um, prefer to defeat this, the apocalyptic threat so again if you want to finish the apocalypse in a single campaign or after many campaigns there is a way to continue with the setting but it's not, no longer going to be that bleak dark apocalyptic experience we just need to take a few examples from other settings. This, is, this may not be the best example, but in Warhammer Fantasy in the old world, you have the end of days always looming about, always threatening that it's going to happen. You don't know when, but it's going to happen. But then you had the Age of Sigmar uh, section of the timeline. A lot of people hated that. And I think a lot of people dislike those sorts of situations because oftentimes it is driven by corporate decisions and money. So many settings, fantasy settings that were destroyed, radically changed, oftentimes it was because the people trying to get the money flowing, not necessarily to keep the setting alive, but because they want to purchase a new yacht or get more money in general. They think, oh, what if we alienate this entire fan base in order to get m newer fans? Because they know that there are a lot of narcissists in in present times. They have a, they have always been there, but in present times it feels like they are catering to narcissists. So they think these narcissists they don't know anything about the older worlds, older fantasy worlds. So let's try to kill all of the important characters. Uh, replace them with different tropes depending on the agenda etc so in, in that's when players get annoyed because the destruction of their beloved fantasy worlds didn't happen because it made sense with the story but because they wanted to promote a new game system uh, they wanted to make some political changes to the setting so those are very negative examples but like i said let's say that it happened in a, in a positive way taking Age of Sigmar as an example, now you have an entire new universe to explore. Let's move a bit away from that, because like I said, a lot of people know exactly what Games Workshop has been doing with Age of Sigmar. But when it comes to, let's say, older editions of Forgotten Realms, the Forgotten Realms already had a sort of apocalypse many years back, when it comes to the fall of Netheril. So, what happened after that cataclysmic event was the Forgotten Realms in the, let's say, a couple of decades back. So the experience went from that cataclysmic sort of affair into a more traditional classic fantasy or high fantasy way of running things. But then you had the spell plague. But after the spell plague, life continued. There were many changes in different parts of the Forgotten Realms. Sadly, they still have many political changes as well. But you can use those settings as examples. When it comes to handling an apocalypse, you can look at the new world, the restored world, as an opportunity with, I would you say, reminders or a cautionary tales of what happened in the past that shouldn't happen again. So in the case of the Forgotten Realms, with the whole netheril thing, there is a certain um, subtle dread when it comes to magic that you don't want to push it too far. You don't want to uh, carry out or handle an, an exploitation of the weave of the basically the magic, the everything that makes magic possible. And thanks to Mistra, of course, the goddess of magic, you don't want to take things too far. You don't want all of the magical power for yourself. Even the villains in the setting know that there is a risk because they rem rem remember, sorry, they remember what happened to Netheril. And when it comes to the spell plague, there are also some important lessons to be learned. So if you want to play an apocalyptic setting, you can use those settings as examples. Let's say that, for example, uh, you want to the Nightfell setting. 
to have a son again. The son was restored or resurrected. But perhaps some of the darker beings are hidden in some of the more yet less explored places of the world. And they are always ready to strike. So perhaps you want to run a campaign with a specialized team of characters that are making sure, always vigilant, that those monsters aren't going to attempt something similar to the destruction of the previous sun. So it's all about taking the cataclysm from the past and place it as a subtle threat. So as you can see, there is still a way to salvage or rescue a campaign, an apocalyptic setting where the apocalypse it has already happened, but the heroes saved the day, handle it as a cautionary tale that is perhaps coming back eventually. Maybe not only is the sun once again destroyed, maybe now the setting is even darker. You combine aspects of midnight with nightfall, and not only is the world in total darkness, now there are even less um, hopeful or heroic people or virtuous people because like just like in midnight the characters are completely dominated by the mind or the tyranny of some greater being like i said the differences are quite noticeable that's why if you want a more hopeful yet bleak experience go for for nightfall if you want really bleak uh, almost hopelessness but that gives you the opportunity to be even more heroic because you need greater lights to shine in an even darker setting then you can choose to play Midnight. So I think those, those are my general thoughts on apocalyptic settings. As general advice, if you want to play the setting constantly, if you want to have many adventures, campaigns and the like, handle things with smaller triumphs, smaller victories. You don't want to defeat the source of the apocalypse, just some minor victories from different regions of the game world. And eventually, if you get tired of the way that the setting is proceeding, then uh, find some way to take the apocalypse to its conclusion, either with the heroes triumphant, creating a new world after that, or everything just went down the darkest hole you can imagine, the darkest abyss, because the apocalypse won and the world was destroyed, perhaps completely, in that universe. It's all up to you. Still, I would love to know your thoughts about this. Do you like to play in apocalyptic settings? Do you do you run apocalyptic sorry apocalyptic settings or do you participate as a player character? What is your perspective on things as a game master, as a player character? And maybe you have some other tips and advice on how to run these settings. So let us know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any other questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.